Welcome to the Liars Club. This is where we take our guests. We tell them to give us the truth. Give us a lie. We figure out which is which. I'm Jessica Wellington. I'm Felicia Michaels. And you're about to get lied to. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Liars Club. I'm Felicia Michaels. And I'm Jessica Wellington. We would like to thank everybody if you've listened to the Liars Club once or twice or maybe three times. You can email us. With the, the best lie you've ever told, and we will read it on the air. So you best or craziest. Lie that you've ever told or have experienced, and you can email us at... TheLiarsClub1 at gmail.com. Also, please uh, uh, go over to iTunes if, uh, if you're hearing us from a different situation, but leave a review. Go to iTunes and leave a review for us so more people can hear. And all that being said, you're listening to The Liars Club. I'm Felicia Michaels. And I'm Jessica Wellington. Today's guest, we have uh, Carl Spital, wonderful comedian, a little, bit of an, a little bit of a noob comedian, but does amazing impressions. Please give it up for Carl Spital. Yeah. Uh, Am I saying that right? Spitali? Spitali. Sp- Spitali. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Carl, how's it going? That's good. good. How are you, Felicia? I'm good. How are you, Jess? <laughs> good. Thank you for coming. Uh, <laughs> I don't right. know why you're already <laughs> laughing at me. This is going to be fantastic. <laughs> I'm glad this is where it's, uh, how we're starting. Okay, well, I'm just going to go right to it. My pick for the day <laughs> is... <laughs> this is dodgeball? Is that she what gives Carl the side eye like, mm-hmm. like, All right, cool. Let's get to mine. My team. <laughs> You've seen him on Comedy Central. You've seen him on Showtime. He's the hilarious John Huck. Oh, thank you. Hey. I, I didn't know we were... I didn't know this was a pick. I didn't know you were yeah. like... <laughs> I would have worn my you, team hat. Well, right. Also, I would love to know what the process is. Is it like you were already texting with me? So you're like, oh, by the way, I need to fill a spot. Do you want to come down? Like, oh, okay. Sure. Pretty much. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I want to throw a shout out to our producer, Andrew Rose. Give it up for Andrew Rose, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yay. We're obligated to say that or he'll fuck up. Anyway, so, <laughs> so uh, our theme today is locker room talk Ooh, that's or locker one. room Antics, Antics yeah. the locker room. And, uh, you know, I was never big into sports when I was a kid. So I thought uh, locker room could mean like a locker room at a strip joint, right? Yeah. That could mean That's that, right? Room. Uh, yes. Anywhere there's That's lockers, I think. Airports, uh, hospitals, waiting areas, subways. I'm talk about the military, so most there jobs, you go. Most jobs where you change clothes That's are probably right. where their lockers are. The reason I'm saying this is I, at the age of 18, was a stripper at the beautiful Peppermint Lounge in Colorado Springs, Colorado. <laughs> I love that name. I, I did, and I did a, I, how I became a stripper, and I'm gonna get to the locker room thing in a moment, is I did a, a, a wet t-shirt Tuesday, and uh, <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I won wet t-shirt Tuesday in Colorado Springs, and that was uh, pretty easy to do. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Was it wet t-shirts and tacos? It, it <laughs> I was going to say, was there a wet t-shirt Wednesday? Did they do this every night of the week? Was it in the some winter? tacos were involved. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so as I went back, I would go back like every couple of weeks, and I would make enough money on tips in the contest where I didn't have to have a job. And then finally, the uh, manager of the place was like, you can't come back here and do the contest. you got to work here. So uh, the first night I showed up to work at uh, the Peppermint Lounge, although the manager had been completely kind and nice to me uh, the whole time during the contest, when I got there, he was like, get downstairs and get your outfit on. God damn it, you're late. So I was like, oh, shit, right? So I go downstairs into the locker room, and as I'm turning the corner downstairs in the basement into the locker room, I hear like a scuffle break out, <laughs> and I, I, I peek around uh, the corner, and it's these two hardcore Colorado Mountain hardcore biker chicks kicking the fuck out of this freshy face looking girl not much older than myself right oh damn so i did the only thing i could think to do i quietly turned around and snuck back up the stairs right well you could have jumped in and started beating on that (laughs) chick too and be like yeah (laughs) the only only logical thing was befriend the bikers trixie stop it you know yeah (laughs) that would have done it so but i couldn't go back upstairs because i was afraid i was going to get fired and uh, so i just sat there in the middle of the staircase it's totally true story and the two biker chicks finish up what they were doing. <laughs> and kicking the shit out of someone. <laughs> kicking the shit out of someone. And they come around the corner and they see me and they're surprised. And uh, the one behind the big one was like, uh, starts yelling at me. Did you see anything? And I literally was like, I, uh, I couldn't think of anything to say. 
I yeah. couldn't think. You know, I was no, 18 years old. No, I didn't say anything. No, yeah. no, it was frightening. So yeah. then uh, the other one says, she asked you a fucking question. <laughs> 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 They're really, like, yeah, yeah, definitely say no. Bad uh, cop, worst <laughs> cop there. Yeah, like, yeah. Jesus. I was uh, completely afraid. And so I was like, no, nah, you didn't see anything. Finally, it comes out. I didn't see anything. And, uh, and then they leave. They let me go. They leave. And then I go downstairs. And the other girl who just got the shit kicked out of her, she's like putting on her makeup like nothing happened. Oh, hello. I'm the new girl. You oh, know what damn. I mean? And I was like, yeah, right. So I just imagine like this contest was super hardcore. Like the guy was on your ass. And this girl must have tripped in one of her heels. And their, her coaches were like, you <laughs> fucking dumb bitch. You we were supposed to take home the win tonight. <laughs> and you fucked it up. Her right. coaches? Yeah. Is that what you yeah, think? Yeah. That the people beating her up are like, like she's a Russian gymnast, and then the guy's she's like, an "Get back out there!" Personality, John. <laughs> Jessica's optimistic. She I, likes to see the good in everybody. Her right? trainers. I think you need yeah. to know that at this point, the contest was over. Yeah, this was. Right. <laughs> this is not this the is contest part. Straight up to going oh, to no, work. But you were late. Yeah, but this for is for work. This is for, for work. work. Oh. Not for the contest. The contest is done. Oh, did, I not, did I so not those explain are definitely that not with enough language? Yeah. No, we got I it. colored I in all the corners, then. right? I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were late for the contest. <laughs> no, no, she said the guy who was nice to her real, during the contest yeah. was cool, and then when she showed up to work, he was like, back in her, yeah. Fuck, gotcha. way to fuck up a stripper locker room story, <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not easy to do. Your turn. Your turn. Well, okay, I'm sorry for fucking that up. Uh, but whenever I was 18, three weeks after high school, I went into the military. So I went in the Air Force. And you have a brother flight. We had a brother flight and then us. What and does that mean, brother flight? So, like, you have uh, on top of the stairs, you'd have two dorms. Uh-huh. And we were the all-girl dorm. And then right across the hallway was our brother flight. And then we did everything with them other than sleep. So brother flight just means dudes in the Air Force. Dudes that were up a couple flights of stairs next to you. They were just across the hall. Ah, okay. Wow, that's a weird term. Is it? Yeah. Well, we would go, like, marching with them. Like, Uh during the day, we did everything with them. They were our brother flight. Okay. Um, (laughs) I think that's that's some Air Force jargon that we're not... We're not catching on to, but <laughs> when you say flight, when you use the word flight, it's like, okay. Are you stroking out right oh, now? Fl- <laughs> <laughs> it's not getting. A flight is a, you're like across the hall. It's what, how dude? hallways work. Like, no, no, that's not what we don't it's understand. Like being John Malkovich <laughs> with the secretary. You're like, <laughs> what the fuck? You know, yeah, that's not the part we don't get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because us as a unit, we're a flight. Okay, see, oh, there we go. Oh. That's what I was searching for. Like a gaggle of geese. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, I was like, you guys, they were across the hall. That's what was your flight team's name? What was your flight team's name? Um, I don't even remember. The go get ems <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember a lot from, from the, hall, the, the hall monitors. The, hall, <laughs> the RAs. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember, like, we would have such long days, you know, and when they said lights out, my ass was out. <laughs> You know, like I hit the bed mm-hmm. and I was asleep, like nothing. But these other girls were still so involved with themselves and like showing off for the brother flight that they would get up in the middle of the night when the uh, our TI was gone, <laughs> right, and go in the shower. The rapper, the rapper, TI, the rapper. No, <laughs> whatever so instructor, tra- uh, uh, training instructor, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you were the. She was the best John at Air Force. Jessica's interpreter. <laughs> you were I'm so good at Air Force. This whole show is a lie, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the story that's the true one? Yes. Fuck. This is a true story. Holy shit. And they would get up and they would like shave their legs and put on deodorant or whatever. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So that's where you draw the line. <laughs> we're at that part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> They'd wipe properly. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, gross. Oh my well, god, it's Jessica. Just, <laughs> it's just that because when, when it was our shower time, we had to be really quick because the TI was in there, like fucking get it done, come on, get it done, get it done. Larry, the cable guy, you was know? your TI. I, I don't know. Get that. her done. <laughs> Wash her up. <laughs> That's who they were. The get her done. <laughs> flight team, get her done. Yeah. <laughs> So you would have to hurry up, and you just you got the main bits, and you got the fuck out of there. The main, the main bits. You, know? you <laughs> got everything you could see at first glance, and then you were gone. None of the giblets, huh? The old, the old, MB the old main the bits. old holes buff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, All right. But these girls would get up and like try to get pretty, uh-huh. and then that left me. I felt like the Sasquatch. 
of the <laughs> unit because I had hairy legs the whole time. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I mean, what are we gonna? I'm not gonna fuck one of That's these guys. That's what I'm saying. Who cares? Like, if right. you're and then I had I I can't bend my wrist back. Right. So I've always done push-ups on my fists. Uh-huh. So I had bloody knuckles. Oh shit. <laughs> Like You're terrifying. Th- yeah, Jesus. I looked tough as shit, right? <laughs> it looked like I had been beating up everybody, all my girls in right. the in the uh, in the flight. Oh, um, I don't know how to end this. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then everyone made out and lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Air Force is I great. Was just thinking, Jesus You're the Christ. best at Air Force. <laughs> it's, it's an easy way to get there because you, you look like that, and then you went to a strip club and beat the shit out of some chick. Right. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> right. Oh, the Air Force Base in Colorado. Yes. That's where. Yes. Yeah, and then I was a coach for this wet t shirt contest. <laughs> <laughs> I trained I trained some ladies. I wouldn't let uh, them shave their legs. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them. That's slowing down the process. We're focused on boobs here, not legs. Shave your boobs. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Always a good story of Jessica. She's what about she's the titty T I. Uh what the titty T I. What about you? What about me? Yes, what about you, Carl? I worked on strip clubs. You did? Yeah. But you were also a football player, right? I was a football player. I got... Yeah. There's a whole bunch of shit that happens in locker rooms that... Um, and when I say... I just want to explain to the studio audience. How tall are you, Carl? 6'8". Six, 6'8", eight. Six, eight, yeah. Carl's a big fucking yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. I graduated high school. I was 6'6", six, six, 325. Yeah, so. you're a big dude. I'm glad you're ballerina or what are we... What should it be? Well, no, I like it because it's manly. Like, if your name was, like... It should be Francis. Beef. Skyler. Uh, Skyler. That's such yeah. a... <laughs> hey, Cody. I uh, believe what she's saying is she's, she'd watch her, wash her bits for you. <laughs> <laughs> and put on deodorant. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Football or... Uh, now tell us about football because that's uh, we kind of picked that theme because we know that uh, yeah, you played, played football? football for a yeah. long time. Uh, um, for you. Yeah, and you're a lot of things happen in football. Um, I could tell a story just off the top of my head. I was probably a, a bad college athlete. Um, I failed a drug test. Uh-huh. Wait, is this, was that what you mean by bad? Like not uh, unathletic? You just meant you also partied yeah, yeah, in yeah. college? Okay, yeah, yeah. that's not like, bad. That's just well, I mean, like as far as student athletes go, I was yeah. not. The, the ones that they would like admire or put on <laughs> so posters. So it wasn't like and trading shit. drugs. Was it steroids? No, okay. this is like party dr- drugs. Drug drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Fun um, drugs. As opposed to the juice that makes me do better at football. It's <laughs> I- ironically, I failed the drug test. Is if you're listening, mom. Uh, <laughs> I quit smoking weed, uh-huh. so I could like. You know, I was like, oh, this is making me lazy and tired Here's and all your this first shit. Mistake. Right? <laughs> but I was hanging out with dudes on the team that were like doing blow and shit. And I know, right? You'd be like, oh, what an upgrade. In college? Come on. They're just like, dude, it's out of your system in like, <clears throat> in like three days. It's true. And I'm like, that's a selling point to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, this is, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to interwind two stories because they happen like, Consec- like okay. within two days of each other or so. All right. So I'm in the locker room. Fast forward that. I mean, rewind that shit. Before the drug test happens, I had f- like found some in my room because, like I said, I've been oh, you're partying lucky. with dudes. I had like found some and there was some shit. I ain't bought it in a while. Probably knew there was a drug test coming up. We haven't had one in a while. It's probably, right? Chill out. F- like, forgot I had it. It was like in there. I was like, oh, shit. And it was Sunday night. And it was during spring ball practice. Sunday, we have a practice on the next day. Some shit, right? We go there. And I was like, fuck it. There's only a little bit in this bag. I'll hit this fucking bump. I'll throw it out. Shit like that. But me being stupid, like, it's not like I found it. And it's like weeks old. Like, I found this like four days ago. And I'd been doing blow before that. Like, you'd be like, oh, it's out of your system in like three days. Right. right? Yeah, that's if you don't do it all the time. That's if you stop doing it three days ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 So leave your system. Yeah. The stuff you did so, three days ago might be on your system, but the shit yeah, you it's did just five like, minutes ago. Yeah, it's just like still gonna be there, some yeah. kind of cokey ass logic. You're yeah. like, oh, it's fucking gone, right? So, <laughs> practice ha- all day happens in like. All and day happens. Like, all day happens. 8 a.m. classes, <laughs> weight training, all that. No phone Fuck, call. No phone days. call. Are you like, doing blow no, the whole day? No, okay, I'm saying, like, okay. we go to class, go all this. No phone call for any drug testing or any of that, right? So I'm about to go to practice. The end of practice, they called guys' names on a list. Like, these guys see me after in the locker room. And it was 
all the dudes I was hanging out with. And I was like, yeah, oh, it's shit. Not random. And I was the last name on the list. And they're like, Spitali. I'm like, fuck. And I'm in the locker room and I'm like freaking out. So like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm fucking, I know I'm going to fail. I'm talking to one of my buddies and like, oh, what the fuck I do type shit. And in the locker room, which I didn't see, nobody helps me out, was uh, my head coach standing behind me, right? And he was just like, Carl, you going to pass this drug test? And I was like, yep, and walked out. And Ironically, if somebody's standing behind you, if you don't see him, right. other people probably aren't going to see him either. Well, I'm nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. I was like, well, no, I mean, if I was, oh, okay. <laughs> looked, call. looked him in the face and was like, yep, and walked out. I was like, I'm going to fail. Right. I went in there. I didn't know what to do. I was stalling as long as possible. I, eventually, I pissed in the cup. It was like two days later, they like called me up and was like, you need to come down to office. And before this, our coaches had been like, yo, if you got a drug problem, you have anything, come, come see us. us, right? Come talk to us, whatever. And, like, who the fuck is going to do that, right? Like, who's going to be like, yo, coach, I'll be doing drugs. <laughs> like, <laughs> none of that shit, right? And it wasn't even, like, I had a drug problem. It was just, like, fun to do, right? He's not there yet, so they're, like, making me wait, like, outside my head coach's office. And, like, I see him walking from down the hall of the football complex, and he's, like, in my fucking office. And he's pissed. And he's like, didn't I tell you, like, if you had a, you know, drug problem, you'd come see me? What the fuck is wrong with you? You know, I was just like, I had to lie to him again and tell him that I had a drug problem because he asked me straight up, like, hey, why should I keep you on this team? And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't even think of that. And I just had to lie through my teeth, tell him I had a drug problem and shit. So, like, I was slap on the wrist, basically on probation shit with the coach's doghouse shit. I had two workouts a day. Like, I had to earn, you know, trust back and shit, right? So I'm doing this, like, whole sober thing. No drugs, no nothing. I'm scared shitless, not doing shit. But I got to get, like, aggression out, all this stuff. I'm like, I got to – I need some type of vice, it has to happen. I'm playing football. I'm smashing my head all day, like, during spring ball. So I'm like, I'm going to go to a strip club. And this is at Temple University in Philadelphia. I'm from South Florida. 18 years old, I went to Philly. All right? So this is in Philly. I go to a Philadelphia strip club, which is a bring-your-own-beer. Beer and women? Yeah. It's a, they just supply <laughs> it's a stage a fucking, and you can all do whatever you want. <laughs> it's a madhouse. Philly. But I go there. So this is a, this is a, 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 a time where I'm not doing drugs. I'm not doing shit. And there's a young stripper there, fresh faced, 18 uh-huh. years old. Yeah. You know? And I'm that age as well. I'm like, can you tell? We're kind of like vibing. I don't spend money on strippers. I'm a kid, but I'm posted up on the wall, big dude standing there, strip club. She's like, comes up to me and starts talking to me, all this stuff. I'm like, you're not supposed to be here. And she's like, well, what are you doing here type shit? Come to find out, she's going to St. Joe's in this like summer program, right? Uh, which is another school in Philly. And she had, like, just graduated high school and shit. So she's, like, under me. I'm 18, 19. She's just 18. And she's like, yeah, it's actually my first day. I was like, oh, shit. So you're really fresh. So now I'm like, okay, maybe I'll hang out with you because you're not trashy Philly garbage, you know? You're well, respectable your Philly garbage, so, you know? Um, yeah. God. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so she, she's like... Uh, you want to hang out? I was, I was like, cool. Um, she's like, yeah, we can drink. We do. I was like, look, I'm not, just so you know, I'm not doing none of that. She's like, okay, well, I get off this time. I can pick you up because I, I didn't have a car. I lived in Philly. I was like, cool, right? And it's her friend that picks me up with her, right? And her friend is a big chick okay, that I never not, met but, before, but right? But not a dude. No, no. Okay. It's a, it's a big chick, right? Like, like I'm 6'8". She's probably like, you know, tall, like six one or something. Like I'm like a big girl. Tall for a woman. Yeah. Yeah. And um you know, it's like her best friend. Like they're kinda like smoking blunts and shit like that. And she's like, We're gonna go back to campus, is that cool? I was like, sure. And we go to like an abandoned essentially campus because it's like the end of spring, beginning of summer. And there's like a whole dorm building that's unoccupied and they're just like going in there and uh, we just like in this room and she's, and there's nothing in there except like a iPod, like radio thing mm-hmm. and that shit. Carl, make yeah. this faster. I'm sorry. <laughs> and she's like, uh, she's like, do you, do you care if I 
you know, do some blow and shit. I was like, I don't care. And these girls just started doing a whole bunch of blow. And then... Where? Off the floor? Like, no, there's nothing else no, there? No, well, I mean, there's, it's a dorm. It's oh, a college okay. dorm. It's a dorm. I mean, there's no, like, an empty there's room no like, like, hey, furniture. they could be murdering you. Yeah. You might want to... Well, that's the other thing, too. I was yeah. like, this is Philly. I don't know. Like, this yeah. could be a setup. I don't know they what's going knives. with this bitch. And now they're, they're doing drugs, but, like, I'm sober. So I'm like, oh, you know, this could Fun, go either way. sober guy with coke heads. But so. I was ready to fuck this, you know, day one stripper chick. And, like, that's why I was... I was like, yes, this is why I came out anyways, you know? But I can't do shit with the, this. And I know that they're going to try and, like, maybe force a threesome with me or something. Like, she's trying to get a big friend. A forced threesome. Yeah, you know. they trying to force their <laughs> big they ass. No, I don't know, they, Carl. They try and <laughs> force <laughs> me, okay? Fuck, I played football in high school and nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> she's I trying to force her big ass friend. when he had that thought, yeah. <laughs> She's trying to force her big ass friends, you know, on this, and I'm like, yo, real shit, I can't do this in here with her, like. Oh, so you actually happen. had the conversation? Yeah, yeah, in front of her yeah. too. Like, I can't, yep, because I'm sober. And she's like, um, that's fine. And then she just like told her friend to leave, like a gangster, and was just uh-huh. like, get the fuck out, because I'm gonna suck his dick. And I was like tight <laughs> this is tight right you, there's no one else in the room okay yeah she Maybe and she kicks guy, like. she kicks the big girl out right and she's like let's have some fun this girl and this is why i wanted to tell this because this locker room is it's uh-huh. like fun it was just the coolest story i could think <laughs> of right uh she and this is the coolest thing like it's probably happens to me this is like a hollywood thing she <laughs> she was like grabs my dick and it's like gets me hard and sprinkles coke on it and does a line of coke off my dick and then started sucking me and it was the coolest thing that happened to me at right. 18 right. whatever years Jesus. old a lot of drugs. <laughs> you what does your dick absor- absorb a lot of drugs no, so, like, it's big enough for rails like, like, <laughs> he's, he's, like your foot. but i don't think it was on there long <laughs> enough okay. well, it was like i think it was like it wasn't like <laughs> hold this coke for me on the on the fucking on your boner i got to run some errands i got to come back and take care of that and it given was, the fact that you're six foot eight, that was a big fucking line of coke. Yeah. I bet. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, well, there you go. I wish I could have partaken. Yeah. But well, part of you did. Part of you did. Part of me did. Thank yeah. you for sharing cool that after school special with us. <laughs> <laughs> that does John, sound like try to beat it. <laughs> oh, my story is almost exactly like that. <laughs> Except uh, I was in band in middle school. <laughs> Me too. And uh, fuck too. off, Carl. I, really uh, I played four instruments. Yeah, I bet you did. Yeah. Everyone sucked your dick while you played them. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been fucking glorious. Oh, I was uh-huh. playing my tuba, getting a blowjob. <laughs> Switched <laughs> over here to my fucking coronet, in got the, a blowjob. In, in the drum room, oh. and I played tuba, baritone, and trombone, and bass guitar, and jazz band. And okay. Yeah, so you're not wrong in any of your analysis. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's finish the story now. <laughs> anyway. And so this we'll is the Liars Club, and I'm just full of those truths right now that you're bringing out. Go ahead, John. I'm so full I'm of truths. I, uh, I, uh, this isn't a good story anymore. I, um, <laughs> no, no. We this, hear. My, my band, the guy who like was in charge of the middle school band, the teacher, whoever it was, he had like this, you know, the baton that a conductor will use. Yep. Uh-huh. Um, he had like a new one. He was like, oh, there's my new baton. He was being a real dick about it. Like, <laughs> kind of like blatantly like it was just he was a strange dude anyway. Like he was the first teacher that ever swore at me. He was like, I don't want you sitting there being a fucking jerk off. And I was like, whoa, whoa guy. Hey. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so he, that got stolen. And uh, he, did he have the, the little baton in his hand as he yelled at it? Yes. yes he, he always had that thing with him. And that was why like one, like it was put down for like one second or whatever. And then all of a sudden chaos, it's gone. No one knows where this thing is. He's like, so he's freaking out. He's like, look, I just want the baton back. <laughs> No questions asked. <laughs> I'll go into this room right now, close the door, and whoever did it, just put And so no one gets up because we're all like, yeah, right. It's like the thing. Like, if you have a problem, just tell an adult. Like, yeah, right. that's yeah, what I'm going to do. Like, my parents, hey, if you're out at a party and you're drinking, we'll pick you up. I'm like, oh, ha, that's what I'm going to call. <laughs> hey, Dad, come and be a real dick at this party I'm at. I'm like, no. So the guy, he was, he kind of looked in the direction of this one particular kid. And for whatever reason, that was enough for me to be like, that's probably the kid that did it. And so we were, it, we were in, afterwards, we were in gym class. We were in a, our, the locker room that was like, 
uh, you know, rows of lockers. It was like a locker room. Rows of lockers, the benches, everything. It's like a middle school gym Thank class. you for describing it so that we have a mental picture Rose. in our heads. So there were lockers. <laughs> That's how one does it, Jessica. And then there was a bench. <laughs> it was a room full of lockers, if you will. Uh, <laughs> a locker. I don't know where they get the name. but uh, <laughs> So, yeah, and then this guy was just walking by, and I just go, Hey, dickhead, give back the baton. We know you took it. As I was, like, but as sixth seventh grade i'd never been in a real fight um i'd never been like attacked by other than anyone other than my little brother who was like band kids though what's that are they all band kids well yes but this dude was also very athletic like so he was me it took him about two seconds to get up behind me and (laughs) take my head into a locker and then be like what did you say motherfucker and i was luckily at a very early age uh i realized that i was better uh, to I was, it was easier for me to talk my way out of problems than to p- punch my way out. So I don't know what I'd done, but I'd helped this really huge burnout kid a couple days earlier who he really liked me. And he basically just got in between us and like grabbed that kid by the neck and was like, you don't fucking touch John Huck. And I was like, yeah, pussy. And then, <laughs> and then I'm like inside, I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, I almost got my ass kicked. And that was like the first that was like the first time I was like, oh, dude, you got You can't just mouth off to anybody you want. That's not how it works. Yeah. But I, I didn't get in a fight. I mean, it's a real bad story. It ends with me just walking like away. Special. That's a yeah. good story. Why you shouldn't try to bully people you tougher know, than you. A, That's it's a, good a story. solid story. It was short. Yeah, Carl, that was a it. short story. Sorry. <laughs> I hope your other stories aren't this long. But so. his I got dick a bunch did not them. get sucked afterwards. So yeah. that I will give you. Oh, yo, then, 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 yeah. And then I, oh, yep. Yeah, no, I didn't get a blowjob at the end of that one either. <laughs> so I'm just making sure <laughs> how it ended. <laughs> Hold on, wait. <laughs> No, no. No, it wasn't. No. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to start the uh, Liars Club portion of the podcast where you guys both tell a story, one real, one not, and we'll trade off. And Carl, you're going to go uh, first. And uh, and Are these uh, locker stories? No, it can still? be any story you want it to be, but uh, about five minutes, Carl. How long <laughs> was the other one? A hundred? <laughs> <laughs> this will be a two-parter. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to have to edit me out. Uh <laughs> I used to I used to collect um, lap dance money when I worked at a strip club. You uh, were a bouncer at a strip club. Yeah. Okay. And I would that's what I did. I counted the dances when they were going. Every time a girl goes back there, it's twenty five dollar lap dance. She has to give five dollars to the house. She keeps twenty. But after that, I tally all their names when they go in there. I'd be like, oh, you know, Yvette owes thirty five dollars. You know, she was there for seven songs, and that's it. So at the end of the night, I would tell these girls, hey, you owe this if they didn't pay me and shit like that. And most of them do, but a couple of them I have to chase down. And um, one time I told a girl that she owed me, it was 10 bucks. I was like, yo, you still owe me for two dances. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'll get to you. I was like, okay. So like the whole night goes through and shit like that. She's still like ducking me for like $10. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, yo, you still owe me for the two dances. I got to turn this in at the end of the night. So like, okay, so we walk the girls to the cars and stuff when they leave the club, you know, in case they get robbed, raped, whatever the fuck, you know, security shit. I'm walking out to the car. I'm like, yo, not for nothing, but you still owe me for two dances. And she was like, ugh, you're going to hate this part. She goes, can I just blow you? <laughs> the for fuck $10? you. $10? Yo, so walking, walking her to the car, in between two cars, she... <laughs> Drops down like this, pulls my dick out, and sucks my dick in the parking lot. For those that you were just I listening, was like, Yo, there was I'll a eat full the squat bucks. involved. <laughs> wow. I'm going to say bold move to do two dick sucking stories in a row. <laughs> bold move. A little bit bold of a show move. off, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> But well, uh, I wanted to make sure that I could end it with a blowjob. Oh, good, good. All your stories. Chicken. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that one ended in a blowjob. So so why didn't you? So I just can't wrap my head around that. You would rather have a blowjob than 10 bucks? It wasn't my money. If you think oh, about you have it, to so give it to he the then to give it to the house. He basic, well, no, no, he has to pay $10 to, pay $10 to, pay. to the house. Oh, well, that's a $10 yeah. blowjob. Exactly. Well, it wasn't like the lunch <laughs> shift, was it? It was like nighttime. <laughs> no, no, no. No, Jessica's no, I, all like, I didn't show up to work till 10 p.m. Essentially, oh, okay, so right. So this, this was the, like probably was like a, f- a 5 a.m., 3 a.m. type of deal. This was the 18. Wow, wow. I mean, that sounds like you got a hell of a where deal. Where was this strip club? What year where, is this? Yeah. Where was it? Yeah. It's in uh, Palm Beach County, Florida. It's in West Palm Beach. West and Palm how many Beach? years ago was that? This was six, seven, six. Uh huh. 
Can uh, uh, Carl's a really wonderful impressionist. Carl, can you do uh, Morgan Freeman getting a blowjob at a strip club <laughs> for ten dollars? <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. How much do you say that blowjob is there? Would you say it's about ten dollars? You say? I have that. It's in my back pocket. Why don't you fish it on out? That's right. <laughs> I love he just gave John eye contact. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Morgan Freeman says, you have right. to do. Let's do it. There you go, girl. Now start on. You got to unroll it a little bit. <laughs> you got to unroll it. Yeah. All right. Now, what you're going to do is going to put your mouth on it. And I'll pay you the $10 later. Is that, is, that, <laughs> is that? I didn't want full release, but uh, uh, it <laughs> oh, you just wanted to hear oh, Morgan Freeman coming. That's all yeah, you Yeah, you can like. just be like, "Hey, can you make Morgan Freeman come?" I think it's something wow. like that. Ah, ah! I think it's more like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, lean on me. Uh huh. Right. Uh huh. Is that one where he's Joe Clark, the principal? Uh, That's yeah, that was, the, that was. You smoke the crack, don't you? <laughs> you smoke crack, don't you? Well, Sing the goddamn school That's song. what you should yell at the girl when she's giving you a blowjob. <laughs> 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 you smoke crack, don't you? <laughs> Sing the goddamn school song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, your turn. Let's <laughs> do impression of you receiving a blowjob. Oh, hey, thank you. This is uh, <laughs> unexpected. Uh, I, wow, that's great. No, you're doing... Nope, it's perfect. It's perfect. That's perfect. Oh, huh. Oh, watch out. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> My bad. No, I don't have a towel. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Thank you for having me. That's uh, my impression that's of me brilliant. getting a blowjob all the time. I will never be able to wash that out of my memory. <laughs> all right, but now it's time for your story. Um, about a I'm, lie. Uh, right, exactly. Um, I am uh, I'm 43, so I'm a little bit... Older than uh, BJ Master over here. I um, <laughs> uh, was in, we used to do, I'm from a small town in Illinois, and we used to, you guys know pool hopping is? You kind of, we would sneak out of our parents' house and meet up kind of in the middle of town and then go, yeah. yeah. And we, where we lived, there were, it was almost exclusively above ground pools. That was the kind of classy, I know that feeling. the general area, yeah. you know. But there was one in particular house. Like we, like our families, we all kind of knew each other. Everyone, like when I was growing up, especially, like my mom knew everybody in town. We, everyone knew each other. And then like at this certain kind of area of town, people started building really weird, out of place, huge houses. Like we called them McMansions because they all kind of, they're Look, like cookie cutters. They they are very cookie cutter, but they were all, they just didn't fit. Like I live in a ranch style house. Like everyone had like one whatever. But this one particular house also had an in ground pool, and I was like, well, holy shit! You know, we saw we saw it getting built. We would we would kind of like our like that's the one. Well, our fun sh shit to do one. as kids is like and when like this is like like we're going into our freshman year in high school, uh, so like right around 1990, and um, uh, we we would not break in but we would intrude on these places getting built and kind of fuck around and not do any damage but like my friend did take shits everywhere we went like he was one of those guys who had to take a shit whenever we broke into something but so <laughs> he's, he was just that he could do anywhere like maybe he just had a nervous belly you know, so i mean maybe but it was one of those things like hey where's chris like oh i think i know where he is never mind and then Watch Wait, where you was step. Was he one of those do. guys that did it like in the middle of the living room? Because I've heard, like I've had friends whose houses have been broken into and then someone will do it in the middle of the living room as a big F.U. That, that is a big F.U. I don't think his, I mean, part of it to me is kind of an F.U. because you're taking a shit like where someone's going to be. 100%. But like, right. Yeah, so he would do it like when we, we used to break into this uh, the school barn that held all the track stuff and we would pull out the, the big mats and jump off the top onto the mats and shit. He and would take a dump on, on the bleachers and oh. no, nah, not, I'm never on the mats. Cause that's where we were jumping. He's not like that insane. Just on the bleachers <laughs> where we were sitting. Well, people might go sit later on, but then you'd, yeah, whatever. and he was always the friend that had like the dumps. Like they were always loggy to this like, day. We call him sewer ass. Yeah. Uh, he <laughs> literally has the grossest <laughs> farts I've ever smelled. <laughs> like, that's, why is there one friend in a group? of? I friends assume he like ate that. nothing but eggs. I have no idea. <laughs> But so me and this kid, like everyone else had kind of, we had gone to a couple of above ground pools and then everyone else had kind of had to go home. And then me and my friend Chris are just kind of running around and sort of the last dudes out. And 
we I was like, you know, we should check out to see what's going on with that in ground pool. And when we got there, there was a dude face down in it. And I was like, Oh my what god, the fuck wow. is this? But like it was it's hard to explain, but it wasn't I could almost tell right away that he hadn't been there a really long time. Does that make sense? Like uh, there were there was some clothes, there was some stuff. There was like Was he wasn't, naked? No, 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 no. He wasn't naked. He was in like boxer shorts or whatever. But like he was just he was just kind of floating face down. So I was like, dude, that ain't that's not right. You know what I mean? So we both got in and like pulled this guy out and he ended up my friend didn't even really have to give him CPR. He just sort of started kind of came to almost and um he was uh he sounded he was Irish. He sounded crazy when he came to. So we'd never I'm a small town Illinois, I never met a dude from Ireland or anywhere. Um this dude, we we helped him. He was he thankful but not like the way that I would be thankful if you saved my life. I'd be like, dude, what do you want? I will give you whatever you want. Like, thank you. Right. Um, he was just <laughs> like, yeah, I, I mean, probably drunk. Because I don't mean to say Irish people are booze bags. But <laughs> I assume this guy might have been intoxicated because he had said he'd hit his head. But I didn't. There was no like, n- I, I don't know why he was face down and not moving. It was. I, but whatever he. So anyway, this guy takes off. We do like this is before the Internet. We can't. We he don't takes off. Well, he goes into the house. Oh, he takes off into the house. So we're like, he left. must live there. But I'm like, dude, a crazy Irish guy lives in this house. And like, so we do some the best kind of uh, surveillance, not surveillance, but like the best kind of research we can do This is before the Internet. This is before like, you know, we have to rely on our parents, essentially. So my friend's mom starts because this is toward a, sort of sort of his neighborhood. My neighborhood's over here. My friend's mom starts doing the rounds finding out who these new people are in these mansions. This family living at this particular house, the Reeds, the Reeds or something like that, but the, they were a regular Illinois family. They had a relative visiting. That Whoa. relative was the Irish guy. That dude ended up being in the 1992 Olympics, and he wiped out on the hurdles. I don't know if anyone remembers. Really? Like, and we, because I remember, like, you can't, when someone tells you that, at that, at that in that kind of, time like when the, you can't f- go google it they're like oh this dude is he's an olympic athlete and we're like that doesn't what <laughs> yeah. that guy can barely swim like what are you talking about <laughs> and well, you can't research that but then when this dude when this it happens you know I'm like the, his mom was like oh you know that guy is in the and we're like what and we i wasn't a huge olympics guy but we watched this thing and he wipes out me and my friend are like this guy can't do anything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how the fuck does he even exist in this world? That's really crazy. And we like we still we still laugh about it to this day. I think I want to say his last name was Reed too, but maybe I'm maybe I'm confusing the people that own the house. Well, if it wasn't for you, he may not have made it to the Olympics. But yeah, but it was like a. I mean, his wipeout was. <laughs> I mean, you can't wipe out on hurdles gracefully. There's right. no like, oh, I'm just going to lay down here. Yeah. <laughs> float to the ground like a feather. Like, it was it was brutal. That's got to be bad. Um, wow. But, yeah, anyway, that's so my... So, the hit his head seemed plausible then. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. The whole thing seemed... Pl- <laughs> After I saw that, I was like, oh, may- maybe he's just a fucking idiot. And just, I don't know. Wrong. Like that, remember that Eagle Eddie, whatever, the right. skier Eagle? dude who was yeah. just like, sort of like, yeah, he's in the Olympics and <laughs> let's watch him fuck up. And he just <laughs> has a yard sale all over a mountain. I'm Eddie. And, yeah. Yeah. But that's, that was... Interesting. Oh. I uh, I don't know. I th- I I don't know. We I have many questions. Mm. So <laughs> was no one else home? He was just there. Was he drunk? Because he. I'm not 100 percent sure if he was drunk. We had been. Drinking. Did you guys go into the house? No, we no, didn't. He just went nope. He, he, just he took off. Like we were. It was probably like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. We were like 15 years old. Totally not supposed to be out. But we whenever we did pool hop, mm-hmm. we would steal beer out of garages and drink that and like we had been drinking as well so we weren't necessarily interested in getting authorities involved or uh-huh. finding out who lived there and getting them outside it was more like just want to make sure this dude's not dead so we don't feel like pieces of shit when we read about it the next day like right. going to save somebody and because again the warrenville digest was the was only paper the but they reported pool, everything um fenced in i mean yes but no i mean we're talking like chain link you know what I mean? Right. It wasn't it was more like so your baby doesn't crawl into it than it was to keep like we could get over the fence and we're not super athletic. Right. And he just left you outside, though. He, he like he ran away from us. Essentially. In his backyard. I think we I think we startled him like and he startled us. And then it wasn't his backyard, though. He was like a guest or a, a relative of the people that live there. So he 
literally bolted inside, and that's when I was like, uh, maybe he lives there. Let's get out right. of here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just gave him side eye for that. <laughs> Why? No, you what know. Was uh, that? What was that? Because uh, I uh, was working on the uh, Lemmy, Emily LaFord uh, podcast where she told, like, when someone's telling you a lie, if you're just sitting here listening, you're like, whatever, and you move on. But when you have to listen to the lie over and over, there's certain tells. And I feel like you gave too much information, but I want to think about that because he gave a lot. <laughs> That's what Emily <laughs> did. People right. so lie funny. that give too much information. I was thinking, about, well, yeah. I was, I was thinking uh, about that, too, before I came here because that is like if you if someone gives you as an, ex- an excuse, like, why weren't you there? Oh, well. The rotator yes, belt. Exactly. And they give you, not, yes. not just my car broke down, but it's yes. like, oh, no, it was the gasket on the thing yes. in the fuel line. And then it was uh, uh, yes, Edelbrock yes. intake. And yes, yes. Holly right. double pumpers. Something to think about. <laughs> okay. okay. So less But I don't, I feel like better. I didn't give, you think I gave too too much detail. We'll discuss after okay. Carl's And we don't know that if you look like a yeah. lifesaver. Or Carl, no. let's, uh, what'd you give, someone give CPR to your dick? What happened? I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what I should say. Is it like a sports story? It can be any anything story you, you want to do. Mine was pretty athletic. One just has to be I like true. how you, you keep like. asking, what kind of story should I tell when it's always a suck dick story? You know? I know. <laughs> that's what <laughs> Should I tell and another blowjob story? Now I'm, ah. now I'm trying to think, like, oh, should I, do I have another fun blowjob story? Um, s- sports. <laughs> uh, you told him how this clubs? works beforehand, right? I yeah, totally yeah. told uh, him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any story. <laughs> Too many blowjobs. <laughs> Strip clubs. <laughs> Another strip club story, uh, not working. This one I went to Vegas. Um, we, f- it was a friend of mine's bachelor party thing, and we get there. I didn't even want to go to this fucking place, and we, when we get there, I'm like, fuck it. I'm Where just, is there? Uh, to the strip club. Okay. In, in Vegas. Okay. I don't. I forget. Now the, you're all fucking specific, I for, Jessica. Yeah, I forget <laughs> the name. I forget the name were, of the place. But were you wearing closed toe shoes? Yeah. Okay. Continue. Can you uh, get into a strip club in sandals? <laughs> no, not in Vegas. Okay. I've tried. Oh. <laughs> oh what? <laughs> oh. That was your test. <laughs> that was. That was like, all right. Let's see this one. Okay, go on. <laughs> were you wearing thong sandals <laughs> and beach attire? <laughs> So you go to the strip club. So I go to the strip club. I didn't even really want to be there. But we went there, and I was like, fuck it. Let me see if I get a dance or something. And I Best had like, kind of customer. I fuck like, it. <laughs> <laughs> I had, like, two girls on me, but this one chick, like, they pulled me upstairs, and this one girl pulls me in the lap dance. Like, it was upstairs. It had, like, a fucking tent and shit. And I had a drink, right? And she starts to fucking... And she's doing, like, this bullshit, like... Half-ass strip tease thing, not even doing nothing. And then, when I put my drink down, she fucking spills it like all over me, right? And then she's like, after I'm like, all right, get up, like you know, I don't want to do this. And I go away. She's like, basically saying, hey, where's my money? Type shit. Mm-hmm, she right? tells the security like, yo, give me money. Ish. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? I mean, just got here. I was like, yo, this place is bullshit. I tell all these motherfuckers. And at this point, like, I'm I'm pretty drunk. I like belligerent drunk, and I started grabbing like, st- like my friends to be like, let's go and like gather them up and shit. And I'm just cussing out this bouncer like, get the fuck out of here, like f- fuck you and shit. And he's like, here, like I feel bad because I paid for this drink. And I was like, you know what, fuck you. This and I like threw the money for the dance, at, like here, you know. And the guy as felt- an ex stripper, I can really see why you invited Carl because he really respects women. And so, so. <laughs> So a guy, I know it seems horrible. So a guy, the guy gets money out of his own pocket. The bouncer dude. Uh-huh. Now this this is being told to me secondhand because at this point I'm pretty much blackout drunk. And he like hands me the money and shit. And it's like a whole bunch of fucking ones. I walk out the front door where like I'm expecting to ride, like where the car is and shit. And I just like threw all the money like in the parking lot and uh-huh. shit. I was like, I don't care about your fucking money. I got fucking drink all over me and this fucking bitch is disrespecting me and shit like like being an asshole. And uh, <laughs> they're telling me like, get in the car and we'll leave and stuff. I'm like, fuck you guys. And I had no idea where I was in Vegas and I walked f- like five, six and a half miles. Oh, to by like, yourself? Yeah. yeah. And and like, in like, in close to shoes to like this fucking... <laughs> Window place. Too. I get back there and I get, I'm so fucking drunk and I can't like find shit. And I broke like a stool or something that was in there the next morning. Well, it's the same night, but the next morning, 
and it was all bad. Um, and then I woke up the next day, like nothing happened. I put like some wood piece together in the room. And, uh, wood piece together yeah, cause in I had, the like, room? Like, yeah, because I broke from like the yeah, stool, okay. but it was like on a piece of the counter that was like connected to it. And I was like, fuck it. And then like checked out the hotel and then left. And like I... F- and that's your story? No blowjob. No blowjob. <laughs> Definitely a lie then. <laughs> But just because Carl, you being six eight, when you are blackout drunk, that must be a frightening. Yeah, you that, when you and that's why I say it's because like I'm never because I'm I'm usually the sober guy. Well, not sober, but at least you know, like DD, like I'll be high, I'll be I'll be smoking weed. You just or something. told a story that we know for sure was true when you were in doing football that you were drug problem. Uh, cocaine and all that, but then you're now saying, "Oh, I'm usually the sober guy." Yeah, I'm usually. No, he, but <laughs> he d- he's I'm, not a big drinker. Yeah, not, yeah, a, big not a big drinker because somebody has to take care of you when you're drunk, right? So like, I can't fit in people's cars. Nobody can lift me up. Yeah, Andre like, the Giant. <laughs> when that dude would pass out, people would be like, "Yes, he's gonna sleep there." Because no one can fucking. That's how it is. So like, yeah. you could get robbed or fucking yeah. jizzed on, drawn on, or pissed on, or yeah, your fucking sewer ass friend. Yeah, like, yeah. shit like that. You'd be like, "Dude, there's a giant shit on him." Oh, you pooped on him. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's fucking, so I try to avoid that most of the times, but I'm in Vegas and, you know, yeah, things got out of hand and I wasn't driving, you know, we <laughs> right, had like a car right. for like the bachelor party and shit. So I was like, fuck it. And then I walked home like an asshole. You walked wow. home. Walked that's to the, to the hotel. The hotel that's a, dr- I, that might be a drunk thing that like really tall people do. Cause I'm six, <laughs> five. And when I get fucking hammered, I will walk like in one direction for like six miles. And be like, I'm fucking going home. <laughs> and I just march for forever until I'm like, I'm three miles past my apartment. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Walk back. Like, the next day, my calves are on fire. My leg, my butt hurt. Like, everything just fucking burns up the leg. So you're 6'5"? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But wow. so maybe maybe tall people uh, over 6'3 like to get drunk and walk. Walk. <laughs> I mean, it's better than saying I would drive my car into trees and shit. Right. That's That's I did true. that when I was younger, but not now. So between your two strip stories, one of those is a lie. Uh, stripper. Club, no, he's strip only told. He's no, only he, told one story. I thought no, he, told he told two. two. He told two. Oh, he told one. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, they're so. both involved strip clubs. One where he got the blowjob. Yep. Uh, and then oh, right. the then this one, the football story. I met the girl at a strip club. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So all right. Okay. All right. All well, right. well I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about that. Figure you out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys are like on a jury or something. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> like, like I don't like how he answered that question. I, well, that's why it's their club. Yeah. They're the liars club. Yeah. Oh. So they're yeah. out here like they yeah. meet about liars. That's right. And they right. just they watch liar shows. I feel like we oh really? <laughs> you guys watch liars show? What what yeah. like what? Lie like to those me. fucking CSI ass I did fucking watch shows, but about uh, or lying. Or like a legal procedural show. A liar show. It's about yeah. lying. <laughs> Law and order. It's about liars. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, yeah. All I right, John Huck, that you're going to bring it home. That's liars. <laughs> well, Eddie Haskell was a liar. Yeah. Um, I, okay, my, stick, sticking that. with the sexy <laughs> the sexy theme uh, that we're having here on this particular episode. Um, I can tell a band story if you want. <laughs> <laughs> spice it up. Yeah, that'll spice it up, you dick. Uh, I, uh, I, w- I was in a porno movie. Uh, wow! Not oh, really. Not my. my, my I know. Not we're my like lie. <laughs> Don't finish. <laughs> okay. Lie. Well, you know they also have people in porno movies that like do shit like deliver stuff and then leave <laughs> and then like. I don't know if you guys have so watched whole extra. movies. You're an extra in a porn flick. Yeah, I had a line. No, that I, what what happened <laughs> was extra. what happened was it wasn't uh, my face or my body wasn't in it. I wasn't like a wiener double for anybody. Um, <laughs> Those are called stunt cocks. Yeah, before the before and after. We need the before penis. Bring it in. Like, <laughs> um, no, a buddy of mine works for. I think he still works for Vivid, which is uh-huh. a one of the leading. If you're pretending not to know, it's, it's one a of the leading. That made Kim Kardashian famous. They oh, is that sex tape. okay? Yeah, they 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 were a they were a purveyor of sexual movies. <laughs> I'll say they one of the biggest companies that uh, makes porno. And uh, my buddy is an editor for them, so he sits in a cubicle all day, edits porn. He hates his life and <laughs> yeah. hates that looking at dicks. That has to be the worst. That has just, to be the worst. Just, Continuation like, shots must be a motherfucker. <laughs> I don't. 
I don't think he's worried about continuity. Like, well, well, the leg was. What's the leg doing here now? We had it was you down. Know, I've I've noticed his sloppy work. Yeah, actually. of course. If you're paying that close of attention, I think you're doing it wrong. But yeah, but so this dude edited, and um, I I've always kind of wanted to do voiceover just because it seems like something I could do in sweatpants and uh, not have yeah. to really care and just you know. But also, it just seems like a, a really kind of a fun thing to do. I've always wanted to voice a cartoon, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't have any, like, I don't, my, when I say I wanted to and I was, I was trying to, that just means I was sitting around going, why the fuck is Dennis Leary doing Dodge commercials or whatever yeah. it was? You know, it's like, I wasn't doing anything to move forward or towards that goal. I was just d complaining. And my buddy called me up and he was like, hey, man, do you want to do voiceover? And I said <laughs> yes immediately. And he was like, for this porno movie I'm editing. <laughs> And I was like, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I literally have nothing to do today. So he, we didn't even go to an office. He has, he's a musician. He had a, like a, a shitty burnt out recording area studio thing in Burbank, you know? No, I mean like a, a weird room okay. with like padded walls and mannequins and just weird shit. Uh, and all his instruments and stuff. So he was like, you just come meet me at this place in Burbank. He gave me the address, whatever. And I, I went there and on the way there, I'm, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing really. I'm like. I guess this is what I'm doing today. I'm going to do voiceover, but I don't know what he would possibly need. Voiceover for well, yeah, like yeah. is it is it going to be is it, are they dubbing a, an Italian film in English? You know yeah. what I mean? Do they need somebody to be like, oh, yes, I do have a penis. And what do they do? They what do they what are they what is this? So when I got there, um, <laughs> uh, me and him, we we got high right away. That was basically the first <laughs> thing we did was was smoke some pot. And then he was like, I was like, dude, what are we doing? And he goes, okay, well, what what it was was there there is a. There's a law, there's a rule, like, I guess that's the, you can't uh, show someone's, like, if there's going to, okay, I'm trying to explain this, right? There, so we sat down, he showed me what he needed me to do, and it was essentially, uh, do you guys remember China? Yes. The, yeah. the, re the, wrestler. the wrestler. Right, so she had a leaked sex tape, and then after that, she made an actual porno movie called China is Queen of the Ring. So it was a WWE <laughs> parody film. Yeah film oh. <laughs> uh so it's a it's like a mock of wrestling but uh, she's in it noir. and there's a lot of sex in a wrestling ring and whatever so what they needed was they can't like evan stone like some of these porno actors are dressed like professional wrestlers for one particular scene but they can't say hulk hogan on the screen but he can come out dressed like hulk hogan and the voiceover guy can say hulk hogan oh. so like Everybody coming out, it was like it was a WWE event. They'd come out of these curtains, and then I was just the announcer. I'm like, oh, my God, it's Hulk Hogan. <laughs> and we're, we're super baked. So he's like, I, you know, I've, I, worked, I've, I work in production. Like, I, I feel in my head I know how it, production works. Like, if you're doing voiceover, they're going to – you just – it's best if I just keep talking, and then they chop out what they like. Right. So <laughs> me and him are – we're dying laughing because we're – well, basically, I haven't watched a porno with another guy since I was in like eighth grade, <laughs> right. and we're in this closed, small room watching this porno. And it's not like this is no offense to anybody in it, but it's not like the greatest porno movie I've ever seen. But I am familiar with some of the actors because I do have friends that, like I said, work for Vivid, and my, one of my buddies wrote Pirates, which was a very was yeah. the highest grossing yeah. porno movie, whatever. Really, you know this? You, you can watch a softcore version of it. Okay. <laughs> you can watch a softcore version of it on Showtime sometimes, but um. So we're laughing, and I, I just kept, like, all the wrestlers, all the guys that would come out, they would be flexing. And it was supposed to be, like, their intro to this wrestling match, which is essentially a gangbang in the middle of the ring. But as they come out, they're just, whatever the camera work, it's just on them for too long. They're doing all these flexes for too long. It's like, <laughs> it's like a minute too long for each guy. And I'm just laughing, and I am just started <laughs> ripping on every dude that came out and making fun of them. I'm like, someone should have told this guy he was going to be shirtless. He might have done a sit-up. <laughs> like, I was constantly mocking people because in my head they're not they're just going to take the stuff that I say that uh -huh. makes sense like oh yeah I, I can't remember there was a guy who looked like Brett the Hitman Hart there was a guy who looked like Jake the Snake there was a no there was nobody no? Jake the Snake I think is too is too sad of a story right now to or at that time to um, oh okay but but anyway so this happens I keep talking uh, I'm announcing everybody the match starts the sex in the ring and I just start like <laughs> I'm making fun of them <clears throat> and then that was the, the gangbang one was one thing and then there was another scene where uh, the guy uh, playing Hulk Hogan and then the other dude was playing Triple H no he was playing the ultimate warrior no it was uh, um, Undertaker not maybe it was uh, no 
Was it like a Ric Flair? Yeah, Ric Flair. But wasn't he WCW? Oh, I don't. This was a porno uh, movie. These weren't the real people. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not breaking down the leagues. I don't know. <laughs> no, he was in but, WO at this time. It's totally but there was, there was one, <laughs> there's one particular scene where these guys are supposed to be going back and forth and bouncing off the ropes on the ring, right? Like they're about to wrestle, but they keep doing this for like three minutes. And I'm like, are these guys going to fucking wrestle each other or are they going to fuck? And finally, like, China kicks open a door and she's silhouetted and the smoke is behind her and everything and she comes strutting up to the ring and you know how they, they roll under the ropes and then pop up or whatever? Yeah. Well, these two dudes are like standing opposite each other in the ring. She rolls into the ring and instead of popping up, she keeps rolling and she rolls off the other side of the ring. Why? And literally, this dude looks right down the barrel of the lens of the camera. He looks right into the camera like, and before he can get a full, what the fuck is going on? It like cuts to the next scene, which is like her just blowing the two dudes. <laughs> it just cuts. It was like a terrible edit. Boom, there she is. And then I go, who edited this piece <laughs> of shit? <laughs> Meanwhile, my friend edited. He's laughing. And like the whole time, I, at one point, they pull out her boob. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's the sickest tit I've ever seen. <laughs> and then I leave all this stuff in. I, I say all this shit. It's nonsense. Jesus. At the end of it, he goes. <laughs> How hey, is it after everything that Carla said? You have become the grossest one now. But, How is it? But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was like, I was saying all this shit just to make my friend laugh and assuming they would cut it. And then he says to me afterwards, he goes, uh, we're going to write you a check. And I go, oh, my God, like I'm getting paid. I had no idea there was even money involved. I thought we were just getting high and then making fun of porno movies. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, no, we'll get you paid. And a couple seconds go by and he goes, what name do you want? And I was like, oh, yeah, just John Huck. And he goes, okay. And I thought... <laughs> I thought it was like, who do we make the check out to, right? So he, <laughs> like, we that's it. We split. And, like, I don't even, I, I, it, it gets almost erased from my memory. I'm like, oh, well, he did some voiceover. And then I go home and then whatever, proceed to live my life. And, you know, the turnover for movies in the world of porn is a little quicker than, like, a regular movie. So the guy was at my door within two weeks with a copy of the movie. And he goes, hey, man, I just wanted to bring over a copy. And I was like, huh? And I look at it, and it was like a full, like, but the cover, she's on the cover. China is queen of the ring. And I was like, oh, thanks. And I call my buddy, uh, Eddie Pence, is uh, another comic, but lived up the street from me at the time, and he's a big wrestling fan. And I go, hey, you want to come down and watch this porno <laughs> movie I did? He goes, you did a porno movie? I go, I did voiceover in this porno movie, but it's about wrestling. He goes, yeah, yeah I'll come down and watch that. <laughs> so he's, me and him are like in my apartment. Again, this is all the second time now I've watched a, a, a porno movie with another dude. And uh, we're laughing because... They, I, I tell them what happened before we watch it. They left in everything I said. They left in everything I said, except, oh. except that's the grossest tit I've ever seen. They took that out because well, the guy enough, goes, that's rude. But, I, but, <laughs> but everything else, my buddy kept trying to edit the stuff out, and the guy was like, dude, put it back in. We need the comedy. This is supposed to be a comedy. And he's like, oh, it is? I didn't know. Okay. So, like, trying to put in the comedy, whatever. So and you the, accidentally did the right thing? I accidentally did the right thing, but, like, to not, probably wouldn't have talked like that if I would have known they were going to leave all that shit in. Right. And then we're laughing about it, and then the movie ends. There was, like, a really weird, pointless sex scene with, like, a guy who looked like Vince McMahon, and then something else, and then the movie ends. And... We're laughing, and I'm texting somebody, and he's doing something, and he goes, holy shit, dude, you used your real name? <laughs> and, like, the credits are rolling up. Everyone else is, like, Creamy Jeans and Vic Johnson, and, and it's just John Huck, voice of announcer. I was like, oh, my God, dude. Like, you could IMDB that shit if you wanted to. That's wow. a credit. But that's, um, that's that story. I think this really explains why I went into comedy because I remember as a teenager, I thought well, this is what adults do. I remember walking in, into like certain trailers with a bunch of teenage boys or like older guys, and they're all sitting around watching a porn. And I thought that was normal. I thought that was a, the adult thing to do. <laughs> I mean, uh, adults can do it, but. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Some I got a buddy like that who watches porn, like, he just watch porn all the time. Like, you're just, like, yeah. eating a bowl of cereal, watching porn. Like, what the I mean, fuck I is guess I could do that, but <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to. I'd probably watch Faces of Death, but I wouldn't want to. I can't do that shit. Wow. Wow. So, wow. Okay. I that, mean, there was uh, a lot of detail in that, but then again, I feel like I would have remembered a lot of that detail. Yeah. Right? So yeah. what do you think with, uh, who should we go first? Carl, what do you think? Of oh, you guys are going to dissect us Yeah, now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
So, Carl, <laughs> the then your part. stories was, was the chick that did uh, that blew you when you owed the $10 to the $10 house. $10 blowjob. $10 we'll blowjob. And then the second uh, story was... And, uh, the first uh, one, the belligerent first Carl. Oh, Belligerent oh, Carl, belligerent right, right, right. Carl. Yeah. Wow. Good name. Close belligerent to Carl. That's the name of your sex tape. <laughs> belligerent <laughs> Carl. <laughs> the damage is done. That's a toughie. I'm going to say, because I, uh, I've actually, I can't imagine you being so drunk that, yeah, I'm going to say, uh, I believe you getting a blowjob for $10 and not the belligerent Carl story. Um, I'm leaning towards that because uh, since it's in Florida, West Palm Beach, like this all fits um, a ten dollar blowjob. <laughs> Florida to but Philadelphia, that's the, the right yeah. there. It's just the yeah. most beautiful, yeah, was, <laughs> most beautiful rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly um, the path too. It's just shit brown. But I think it might have been a ploy for you to say, you know, what a douchebag that you were to that girl and that club and everything to make it us think that that's not true. And I think you were purposely leaving out details because we had just talked about being detailed mm-hmm. in that story. Yeah. I think that it's not true that uh, you got the $10 blowjob. I think that's a lie. And then does he guess? And no, tell us what, what's the story, Carl. Well, do, you, do you have any insight on this, Yeah, John? No, I mean, I would say <coughs> I would say I, I buy your tall, walking, drunk, smashy <laughs> story. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? And if I ju- if I didn't hear the other stuff about football and blowjobs, and maybe I I would not believe that other story about the ten dollars. Yeah. But I I would I would venture to say though the walking and smashing is uh is probably real. It's yeah, real. I think so too. Yeah. I think the walking is true. Both the of you guys are wrong. Oh wow! No way! Yeah. <laughs> I got a ten dollar yeah. blow job outside <laughs> of the fucking well, you place I worked at. Before the show, no, no, no. Yeah. I didn't know about the ten dollar blow job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's, wow. who's bringing that up in conversation? <laughs> hey, how you doing? Oh, whew, well, about uh, fifteen years ago, got a ten dollar BJ. <laughs> the um, the so life's good. the belligerent story was actually a friend of mine, and oh, it was okay. so awful, and he really like. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm happy to hear that you really weren't that big of a dick. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, because I, I just had to and, play and it I couldn't out. believe having worked in a strip club. If you worked in a strip club, that you would, even that, that I would disrespect would other dis- people there. Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. point. That's yeah. a good yeah. point. You know, they're just trying to that do their is job. Good yeah. Observation. All right, John. And your story was the do I have to guess uh, mine? pool hopping. <laughs> pool do you hopping. have to guess yours? <laughs> <laughs> pool hopping. Pool hopping to a pornos. China porn. That is, is the person. Wow, that's, yeah. a, that's a toughie because you gave so much detail on each of those stories. God, but not but too much. I, th- I didn't think I gave too much detail. On Andrew, it. would you like to chime in? Yeah, I'm going to assume the first one is a lie only because you were focused so much on giving like the name of the family. And I think you were like trying to think of a name, or in your like underwear or breach or something like that. And I figure if you found like a dead man floating in a pool, that's something you would not forget. So I'm thinking it might have happened to a buddy of yours, and the other one is true because I feel like that's something that, like a comic would easily get into. That's not why it's my thoughts, but that's my thoughts. I think the first one is uh, I I felt like you was focused on that on the pool, and the whole time I'm thinking about this dude in the pool and he hit his head and shit. But because you guys had when, when you lived in a world of in ground pools. <laughs> So I'm gonna say that the I'm going to say that the first one is uh, I'm gonna say the first one is real. Fuck it, I'm saying the first one is real. Yeah, and I and I'm gonna say the uh, other story happened to a friend of yours. The porno. The porno. Um. God, this is a toughie. It's tough because is it usually is it usually this tough? Not, well, we did have Earl who actually Ritz crackered a girl. Earl's was <laughs> tough. I listened to that one. That was a real that thing. That was, yeah. Oh and she God. was uh, Shelby's Lisa. wife. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, the guy that, yeah, it's a long story. You got to listen to episode number two it's, with Earl. Scandal. That was an amazing story. Yeah. Yeah, so that one was really Skakes. tough. That's why I thought I had to bring dirty, like, dirty stories. Skakes. It's a great episode. Oh. Um, so what's your, what's your thoughts? I'm going to say that the pool is not real. Because, I mean, he was in the Olympics. 
There's so many <laughs> details, <Yes>. right? <laughs> it's so, layered. It's so multi-layered with bullshit that it could be true. <laughs> I mean, why were you at Olympics? <laughs> yeah, like who the... It could have been any guy, but the fucking... Yeah, like the payoff is the Olympics. You think and his all the wife athletes in the Olympics Nobel are like Peace virginal Pride. people that I just really think he, take care yeah, of themselves we know a lot and don't of do them. anything I don't think crazy. That, but, I mean, but what are the odds of this guy... This Irish guy who was, what team was he on? Was he on the Irish Ireland, team? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He ran for Ireland. That was the craziest oh, they're part. They're not in the Summer Olympics. There's <laughs> no way. They don't, they don't run the <laughs> hurdles. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, 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 yeah, and, and you like, said that was in like small town in Illinois? Yeah. Yeah, that's Ireland, Illinois. I don't think they have an I'm not exchange program. He just, or, he's an Irish <laughs> house guest training for the Olympics. But you didn't hear in what Illinois. I said when the, the, my friend's mom walked around and found out. Everybody, like they, that guy was visiting. Right. Yeah, he's yeah. like a re- All right, so what? Though. Which one is which? Which one is which? Which one is which? Should I yeah. tell now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Irish guy in the pool is the lie. Oh. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> you know why? You yeah! just gave it away right there. You said it was your friend's mom that found out in the neighborhood, but originally you told her that your mom. No, I never did. I said my friend. No, no, he started. No, I said. My, I said, my mom, uh, my neighborhood was over here. My friend's neighborhood was over here. No, so my mom walked now. around and started doing the. Oh, yeah, just yeah. now, you said my friend's mom found out. Yes, true. That's what I said earlier, too. My friend's mom. I never said oh. my mom. It was always Mrs. Conley that did the So where, the where should we have gotten you, your If tell. you guys could do a giant wrestling match right now, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not the last wrestling match I saw was that China movie. So I don't, oh think, he, I don't think he wants to be wrestled God. like Which that. Wow. He's real. <laughs> no, that's definitely real. <laughs> yeah. It is so on amazing. IMDb. I'm not actually sure if it's on IMDb, but you can definitely look at the credits of the movie. I, they gave me the movie. Is movie's. it on that YouTube? Would be the only any of it on YouTube? I got homework My guess is you could find chunks of it. You know what I mean? You've heard his voice. In wow, China's that's an queen awesome of the ring. I did come up. I got introduced like that one time to come up. I go, anything I can, you, I can say about you? Yeah, you can tell him I did voiceover in a porno movie. <laughs> <laughs> and the host was like, oh, okay, dickhead. Like, another comic with a wacky intro. Like, oh, this next guy, he can't read, but... Wow, that was some very detailed stories today. Yeah, uh, that was good. That, Thank I, you, guys. That's what, when, I, when you first saw me and then I drove away, uh-huh. I was like, had to go look up the Olympics, 92, where were they? Are you Cause, serious? Because I didn't know. <laughs> if, you were like, if you were like, where were the Olympics that year? I was ready to say they were so in Barcelona. What part was the lie? What part was the Yeah, bo- how did you even come up lie? with that? Was it happened to a friend of yours? No, nothing. You just <laughs> just <laughs> just oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> I saw we were supposed to make up that's a lie. The first oh, wow. time. Somebody just completely make wow. up. I like used to go pool hopping. Yeah. We did go to an in-ground pool. It was crazy to find. We left all our stuff on the side. We like were swimming. We threw all the lawn furniture into the pool. Uh-huh. Then as I was drying off, I look across the pool. I go, what's that light? And as a guy with a camera, he goes, smile for the camera, boys. And he just starts <laughs> taking our picture. And his wife comes out yelling, I have a gun, I have a gun. And we just all ran into the woods in our underwear. Like that was the real story of our pool hopping, and then I had to break wow, into my own house. That would have been. That would have been. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, now nah, you're lying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is your name even really John Huck? That is the truth. It is. Wow. You can but check so the, the, pool, the pool hopping Queen thing is something ring. I'd written about in college, and I talked about it like extensively. But the guy in, in the pool, I was like, who do I find? It's weird that like. How why? did you even come up with the idea of like the a hurdle Olympics jumper? I, because I I don't know because I was thinking about a guy. How do you, what's the like the worst thing I'd want to wipe out in in the Olympics would be uh-huh. a hurdle? You just yeah. look like a complete idiot. So I was like, yeah, hurdles. I mean, why wouldn't you make him a swimmer? Because that would be too. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. saved Michael Phelps from a pool, but now he can swim the fucking yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. yard wow. dash in three seconds. Oh, I get, I get why you did that. That was that was a tricky dicky right there. Dude. And Dude. I figured I didn't know who else would be here, but I figured like if I pushed like I'm like I said I'm 43, so like maybe you would understand like 92 Olympics if you remembered that. But like you'd have to really be focused on the yeah. fucking. As Olympics. A year old, no. well, it was so you, believable that you like sat down and watched this guy wipe out in the Olympics. I did watch. I watched hurdle videos, but it was all <laughs> sweet <laughs> ass athletes wow, kicking I'm ass. I'm blown away that I got hoodwinked. So, John, where can people uh, catch you, and where can they follow you? Uh, I am going to be headlining the Brea Improv on August 1st, and I'll be at the Comedy Loft in DC August 8th and 9th. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at J O N H U C K on Instagram at J O N underscore H U C K. Very nice. And how about you, Carl? Um, I'm going to be doing a uh, feature spots at a lounge in Huntington beach next week. That Rec you room? <laughs> yeah. Boom. One of the, um, you can catch me on Instagram, all that at big spit B I G S P I T. Uh, yeah. 
Well, thank you, guys. You can follow me at Felicia Michaels all across the board. And I'm Jess Wellington, two across the board. I'm one Andrew Rose across the board. Well, there you go. Thanks, you guys, for coming and sharing your uh, uh, stories and lies. Uh, you have been listening to The Liars Club. I'm Felicia Michaels. I'm Jessica Wellington. And you've been lied to.